is agreed to. Building Amendment Bill number three, third reading. Call on Government Orders of the Day numbers three and four. Search and Surveillance Bill, Committee Stage. Crown Pastoral Land, Rent for Pastoral Leases Amendment Bill, Committee Stage. I declare the House in Committee for consideration of the Search and Surveillance Bill and the Crown Pastoral Land, Rent for Pastoral Leases Amendment Bill. Mr Chairman. Mr. Members, the House and Committee for the Search and Surveillance Bill in consideration for the Crown Pastoral Rent for Pastoral Lease Amendment Bill. Members will move first to the Search and Surveillance Bill. And the question is that Part 1 stand part. Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Chair, the first part of this bill contains the preliminary and interpretation provisions and provides that the Act will bind the Crown. One of the most important aspects of lawmaking is to ensure that any bill is consistent with human rights values, particularly when there is some concern about the powers that a bill may grant. The purpose clause was inserted in the bill by the Select Committee, who acknowledged that the bill required clarification as to how it interacted with the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 and other acts that conferred rights. The insertion of the purpose clause ensures that the rights affirmed in the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 the Privacy Act 1993 and the Evidence Act 2006 are recognised in conjunction with the law enforcement powers granted under the Bill. The inclusion of this purpose clause highlights the importance of human rights values in the context of search and surveillance powers. The purpose of the Bill also makes the necessity of this Bill clear by recognising investigative tools must be effective and adequate for law enforcement needs and the need for modernisation. Search and surveillance powers were spread across the statute book in 69 different statutes, and the powers these statutes authorised did not take into account technological developments in methods or the high-tech environment within which criminals now operate. Law enforcement must be able to combat defenders by using methods that are able to overcome eva evasive uh, techniques that criminals use. The bill allows the police and regulators to do this, providing that the techniques used are reasonable and they're regulated. In light of the Supreme Court decision in the Hamid case last year, which questioned the lawfulness of covert surveillance, Parliament passed the Video Camera Surveillance Temporary Measures Act 2011. I appreciate the way, uh, Mr Chair, in which members from the other side of the House worked with the Government to pass that Act. The expiry of the temporary legislation on the 17th of April this year means that the Search and Surveillance Bill must be enacted by then to prevent a number of ongoing investigations being jeopardised. To that end, I have tabled a supplementary order paper uh, to provide the relevant parts of the Bill to commence on the 18th of April 2012, as well as a number of other amendments. I'd just like to take the opportunity, Mr Chair, to thank those members of the House who worked on this bill, both in the Select Committee, but also since then I've been working with um, Charles Chevelle from the Labour Party, and I thank him for his cooperative manner. Um, I've also been able to send to each party uh, a copy of the major SOP that I've tabled, and I would like to hope that um, people now feel far more um, at ease with some of the amendments that have been made. So thank you, Mr Chair, and um, I'll enjoy hearing everyone else's contributions. Charles uh, Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, Mr Chairman, I'd like to uh, 